Okay, so I'm going to review really quick some of the things we talked about in class about uh, the difference between natural selection and artificial selection. And kind of three of the things I'm going to try to answer here is between these two, we know that genetics has to do with heredity and how traits are passed on. So the difference between these two comes kind of down to how traits are chosen. Like what are the best traits in a situation? Um, how are traits passed on in these two situations? How does it actually come to the point to where something gets passed on from parent to child? And then what's the goal of these two things? So with natural selection and artificial selection, the word artificial we talked about in class literally means not natural. Okay, so artificial selection is when uh, we people, we humans, kind of take nature into our hands and we try to figure out a way to get the best out of nature or achieve some kind of goal. So we talked about how most foods are um, artificially selected over time. They're, they've been bred with other very healthy foods uh, to where we get these big uh, fruits and vegetables and things like that. But it's not because we just like found a giant delicious tomato, it's because we we took the two healthiest tomatoes and we bred them together and we got a little bit bigger tomato and so on and so forth. So traits are chosen, the best traits for artificial selection are chosen by we, us people, right? Um, so artificial selection is where people decide this is what we want and this is our goal and this is how we're going to try to achieve it, right? So we're going to take, we read an article about the grape breeders and how they are trying to breed different kinds of grapes because their goal is to get cotton candy flavored grapes. So they may be taking grapes that are from totally different parts of the world that would never in nature be near each other and they are breeding those grapes together to try to get the best traits. So with artificial selection, traits are chosen by people based on like our goal or what we want. And we'll come back to this in a minute with uh, some examples of how these two would work with uh, dogs, for example. So the difference here between artificial selection and natural selection is where in artificial selection, people choose the best traits, right? We choose that we want grapes to taste like this or we want dogs to look a certain way. With natural selection, the way traits are chosen are whether or not they're helpful for something to survive and more importantly for them to reproduce, okay? So in natural selection, traits aren't necessarily chosen, right? Nothing really changes or chooses the best traits. Nature kind of dictates in certain areas, here's a good trait, um, and the animals that have that trait are more likely to survive. So with natural selection, traits are chosen by whether or not They help survival. Okay, so where grape breeders here, we're talking about the grape breeders, so we'll go with that, are choosing, we're going to make, try to get these grapes uh, taste like cotton candy, right? So we're going to choose this grape and this grape and breed them together. Uh, in natural selection, if we're talking about grapes, the best trait for grape might not be what it tastes like, but it might be what it looks like. Um, so the grape that, or it might be how well it withstands cold, right? So in natural selection, if we have a really harsh winter and all the grape plants die except for a couple because they have some kind of gene in there that helps them withstand the cold, uh, and they're the only ones that survive and they breed and they, they make more grapes that are uh, resistant to cold, then that's a good trait, right? That helps those grapes survive during cold winters. So in that example, it has nothing to do with what do the grapes taste like, what do they look like, what do people like. It has to do with how well do they survive. Is there something that helps them survive a little bit better? Okay, so the second question is how are traits passed on? So again, in artificial selection, we choose, right? With animals, with dogs, we choose which ones have the best traits, which dogs have the best traits, which animals have the best traits, uh, which plants have the best traits, and we selectively breed them. That we, that's, that is, we say, we want this dog and this dog to breed, or we want to cross these two grapes. Uh, we don't leave it up to nature, 
right? We make the decision on what animals or plants breed. So hard traits passed on by people, again, this is kind of a key word with artificial selection, people, by people choosing which plants or animals to breed. So where natural selection is, people don't choose in nature. Nobody goes into the forest and decides what animals are going to breed and have offspring. Uh, in nature, natural selection, right, only the animals that survive, that uh, have a better chance to survive, they're the ones that get to reproduce. So again, uh, going back to the grapes, if only the grapes survive the winter that can handle this really harsh winter, those are the only ones that get to make more grape seeds and make more grape plants. So with natural selection, traits are passed on by the survivors, right? By the animals or plants that survive because of some kind of adaptation they have. So traits are passed on by survivors. Natural selection is very much about survival, okay? If a trait helps an animal survive, then that's a good trait that will probably be passed on. And over time, we would see a bigger percentage of that population having that trait. Okay, third question is, what's the goal of these two things? Natural selection, again, the goal of natural selection, this is nature. The goal is to survive. Okay, no animal sets up to say, well, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to survive today. But that's just kind of how nature works, right? Animals are constantly trying to survive. And if they have some kind of advantage, some kind of trait that helps them survive, then that's good. That's natural selection. So natural selection, traits are passed on. I'm sorry, what is the goal? The goal is to survive and reproduce. Okay, so if we think back to the little, the bunny simulation we watched. Uh, we had a little brown bunny jumping around. I'm sorry, a little white bunny jumping around. And when we introduced wolves, the wolves saw the white bunnies and they started eating them all up, right? And that was a trait that did not help with survival, right? They were sticking out. So once we added a mutation, a mutation happened. We call that an adaptation in nature if it's a good mutation. A mutation happened that made a couple of the bunnies be born with brown fur and it helped them blend into their environment. So, and then we released the wolves again. The wolves ate a bunch of white bunnies. They still ate some brown bunnies. But the brown bunnies had a better chance at survival, a little bit better chance. So those surviving brown bunnies were able to pass on those good traits that helped them survive. Okay, And so if each generation we had a few more white bunnies get eaten than brown bunnies. Okay, So each generation we had a greater population of brown bunnies survive. That means more brown bunnies were able to spread their genes and their brown fur color. And by the end of the simulation we saw all brown bunnies. Right? So natural selection has to do with whether or not traits help with survival. In that case, the brown fur helped with survival. So the survivors were able to reproduce. Right? The goal of natural selection is for animals to be well suited in their environment where they can survive and reproduce. Okay? Natural selection, nature. What happens when we let nature take its course? All right. With artificial selection, what's the goal? That's kind of the point of natural selection. There is a goal that is chosen by people. The goal with artificial selection is to benefit people, to help us somehow. To benefit people or accomplish some kind of task. So we read the article about uh, the Sumilov dogs in Russia and how they had bred jackals and huskies together for a few different generations because they were trying to get a dog that had a really good sense of smell and it was also pretty easy to train um, or was able to be trained. And so a jackal and a husky are, would never in nature be in the same p place and they would almost certainly never breed because jackals are wild animals and huskies are domesticated. But in that article, 
they said, hey, we want, we want a dog that has a good sense of smell so it can sniff out bombs, and we want to also be able to train it, right? Jackals had a really good sense of smell, but they couldn't train them very well. Um, and huskies were very trainable, but they didn't have as good a sense of smell as the jackal. So they had a goal, right? They had this goal. We're going to make a bomb-sniffing dog. And they chose, we're going to breed a husky and a jackal together to see if we can get this good sense of smell and this high trainability. Um, and it took them a couple times, right? So they got the first generation, and they were had a pretty good sense of smell, but they still couldn't be trained very well. So they intermixed them again and again until they kind of got the right uh, combination of the two traits they were looking for. But it was always by people choosing. Uh, this puppy that we got was really trainable and had an okay sense of smell, but he was kind of the best puppy to litter. So we're going to let him breed with the best puppy of this litter and try to get even a better generation of bomb sniffing dogs. So that's artificial selection, right? Where people are choosing. We have a goal. Uh, here's what we want. And we're going to choose the plants or animals to breed to accomplish that goal. So we're not letting nature take its course. In artificial selection, we are choosing. So if we think about, and real quick before I close here, if we think about stray dogs, and I don't, this is always what comes to my mind, right? If there was a pack of stray dogs that was running around, say, Forest Grove, where we are, uh, and people disappeared, poof, no more people, right? Natural selection would take place, and these dogs would go into the woods, and they'd go into the, in town, and natural selection would take place, and it would dictate which of these dogs are going to survive, and what traits do these stray dogs have that help them survive, right? So if we think about our dogs that we have, they've all been naturally selected, I'm sorry, artificially selected over a lot of years. So not all of them are, are uh, very well suited to survive on their own. In fact, some of them are specifically bred to depend on people, right? So if we had these stray dogs and natural selection took place, what would we see after, say, 50 generations, okay? And if we had these stray dogs and they were the only dogs, and artificial selection, people took these dogs and started breeding for 50 generations, what would we see, right? So we're concerned with what traits get passed on in natural selection versus artificial selection. So if we think about these stray dogs and they get turned loose into the woods, the most helpful traits would probably be ones that help them survive, right? So like maybe having a thick coat of fur so in the winter when they can't go indoors, they can still live outside. So maybe thick coat. Okay, uh, maybe these stray dogs to survive in nature, the most vicious of them, the ones that are most likely to bite somebody or something, the ones that are the least friendly, because they need to be able to hunt and they need to be able to stand up for themselves, right? If they go into the woods and run into a bear, they need to be able to bark and try to scare it away. So the most aggressive dogs, that would probably be an advantage with natural selection. Okay, so we'll just say aggressiveness. And maybe the dogs that are, you know, if we look in nature, we don't see a lot of predators, especially mammals, that are very small, right? Uh, dogs are basically carnivores for the most part. And so they need to be a little bit bigger, right? So maybe medium to large sized dogs would probably also be a helpful trait, right? We don't look and see coyotes that are five pounds or 10 pounds. Uh, they're usually upwards of 25, 30, 40 pounds. So uh, larger body sizes. Okay, so if we take this pack of stray dogs, the dogs that have these three traits, and there's probably some more, would probably have a better chance of surviving, right? And if they have a better chance of surviving and they survive for, you know, say a year, they're probably going to start mating and having more puppies. And they're going to pass on if the dogs with the thick coats that are aggressive and have large deer body size, if those are the ones that survive and reproduce, they're probably going to have puppies that have thicker coats, they're aggressive, and larger body size, right? So these are traits for natural selection that would help these stray dogs survive. So if we came back in 50 generations, right, people disappear, and these stray dogs, nature just takes its course for 50 generations, and we came back. 
we would probably see much different looking dogs. We'd probably see dogs that are looking closer to wolves or coyotes, right? Um, they probably wouldn't be very cute, very cuddly, right? They'd probably be relatively aggressive. We talked a little bit about how a lot of wild animals have a lot of stress hormones in their blood, and they make some jumpy so things don't uh, sneak up on them and such. We'd probably see dogs that weren't very friendly towards people because it helps them survive to be a little bit aggressive, right? It helps them survive to be a little bit bigger. It helps them survive to have a thick coat that they can live through the winter. So we'd probably see a very different looking dog than, you know, a, a beagle or a Rottweiler or a lab. We probably wouldn't be able to pick out what breed it was because the breeds in nature, those don't help a dog survive, right? Only certain traits do. Breeds are created by people. So, all right, let's say we have these stray dogs and they're all kind of mutts, right? And we let artificial selection take place for 50 generations for these dogs. So what traits are helpful in artificial selection? Well, for people, we like cute, cuddly dogs. We like them to be nice. We like them to be trained. So probably one helpful trait in artificial selection would be uh, how trainable they are. Right, so we'll call that intelligence. Okay, this is a big one for people. We want our dogs to be able to do tricks and uh, get us the paper or come when their name's called. Right, so a big thing is we'd probably pick the smartest dogs like, hey, that dog, um, it learned when dinner time was. Right, so we're going to keep him around. We're going to let him breed with another dog that's pretty smart. Uh, another thing for people is, in nature, it doesn't matter how cute or cuddly these stray dogs would be, but in society, we really like our dogs to be cute and cuddly. And, um, so, probably the looks of the dog, right? And I'll just put looks because some people like their dogs different ways, but we'd probably pick, me personally, I'd pick, oh, this dog, I really like the way he looks, and he's kind of smart, so I'm going to keep him around. And we're going to also breed him with this other female dog that's pretty smart, and she, you know, she's kind of a cute dog as well. So, we'll put looks. as probably an important trait in artificial selection, okay? So, and there's obviously some more, probably loyalty, like uh, does this dog come around every day and let me pet him? That's probably a big thing for people, but the point is with natural and artificial selection, they're very different things. With natural selection, the best traits are ones that help animals survive, okay? And so if a pack of stray dogs, natural selection took place for 50 generations, we would see something that looks a lot more like a wolf or a coyote or some kind of wild animal. Whereas with artificial selection, traits are chosen by what do people want, right? People want out of dogs, they want a smart dog, they want a cute dog, uh, they want a loyal dog. So if we let these dogs be artificially selected, that population be artificially selected for 50 generations, we'd probably see, you know, a lot like we have now. We'd have specific breeds maybe. Um, and we'd have probably intelligent dogs that look nice, right? So hopefully this helped out a little bit, just kind of seeing the difference between natural and artificial selection. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know.